Good morning, everybody. We start this Tuesday with a Fox News alert. It is one o'clock in the afternoon in Israel, and new images show the children who were part of Monday's hostage release being reunited with their families after seven weeks of captivity. There one just jumps off of a helicopter. We expect the release of at least 10 more hostages at some point on this Tuesday. 11 Israelis, including nine children, were freed yesterday as part of the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. That brings the total to 51 over the last four days. So the limited truce has been extended until at least Wednesday, but we've been seeing large dark smoke clouds filling the Gaza skyline over the last hour. Bro. Yeah, what's that about? Trey Yinks is live in Tel Aviv right now. Down. Hey, Trey. Yeah, hey guys, good morning. It is day five of the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. We just got an update from one of the top doctors here at the Ichilov Hospital in Tel Aviv discussing the condition of the patients that got here last night, those children that were released from Gaza as part of this larger ceasefire deal. Overnight, 11 Israeli hostages made their way out of the Strip. They were flown here to the Ichilov Hospital in Tel Aviv. Nine of them are children. These Israelis were taken hostage from a small community called Niroz close to the Gaza border. Israeli officials, though, hopeful they will be the latest group among many that could be released in the coming days. They're hoping that 10 additional hostages will be released tonight as the ceasefire was extended for two days. It's the families reuniting, though, that stands out amid this past week. You can see in this video here the Brodutch family that was reunited over the weekend. These kids getting to meet their dog again after more than 50 days. You can just see the joy on their faces. We also continue to follow developments from inside Gaza. Right now, Palestine Palestinians are using the lull in fighting to gather supplies and clean water. At this water station in Han Yunus, Gazans fill up large jugs, unsure about when they'll have the next opportunity to do so. Now, at 53 days in, this is the longest war in the history of Israel and Gaza, and it is expected to go on for many more weeks, possibly even months. Guys? So Trey, Trey, go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. Um, Trey, I'm just wondering if we're going to know if the, if the pause is going to be extended past these two days, how will we know? How do they inform each other through Qatari officials? Yeah, so right now the Qataris and the Egyptians are actually trying to get this extension extended. There's 48 more hours of ceasefire underway right now, but we did see some live images from the Gaza Strip just last hour of black smoke rising up from the skyline. It's unclear what that's from. But it just highlights how delicate this agreement is. Any single moment or movement could collapse this entire deal. So the Israelis are focused on getting 10 additional hostages out each day. If both sides are still interested in continuing the pause in fighting, they will relay that message through Qatari negotiators. It will go back and forth, and the agreement could be extended. But eventually, Hamas will run out of women and children to release. And so there are questions about what that renewed fighting will look like once the Israelis start their campaign again against Hamas inside Gaza. And Trey, I see that the Israeli prime minister has received the list of the names of the hostages Hamas intends to uh, release today. Is that list released for negotiation purposes or is it just to give the families a heads up? Hey, uh, these, these people are going to be released. We want you at the hospital to greet them. So it's a little of both. The Israelis have requested that they receive the names in advance, and the major reason is they want to confirm the identities. And even when these mm. hostages are in the hands of the Red Cross and make their way to that southern Rafah crossing between Gaza and Egypt or the Karim Shalom crossing between Gaza and Israel, their identities are immediately checked by Israeli intelligence officers. One other thing we should note here is that reports indicate Hamas doesn't know where dozens of the hostages are. They were given to smaller organizations inside Gaza, like Islamic Jihad, and taken to other areas of the Strip. And that's just another line item that could complicate these conversations as the Qataris and Egyptians look to extend this agreement. When we talk about the hostages that are held inside Gaza, the doctor here giving us an update on those that were released last night, saying that some of the children were malnourished and that they were asking for specific food when they were released. Mm -hmm. We've also heard similar reports from other hostages that were released in recent days, and it really just gives you a sense of the conditions that they were facing for more than 50 days inside Gaza. Yeah, and as parents, we, sorry, as parents, we can all relate to this. We're watching the children when they see their dog. If you have a dog, your kids react the same way. They were released, and yesterday you were saying some wanted chicken, some of the kids wanted pizza. We can all relate to that. These are human beings 
beings, not only human beings, but some of these are so young. There's that 10 month old baby. We're about to interview a family member from that family, but we're being told that that baby was handed over to a separate Palestinian terror group. Do they negotiate as well? Is there a chance that that baby and, their, and that baby's family could be on a list? It's a great question. And look, there is concern that some of these symbols, these young children who the Israelis and, and the entire world were watching so closely to see if they would be freed, could be used as leverage by Hamas. And it's, it's jarring when you think about the situation here. Hamas armed militants inside Gaza are holding months old babies as, as leverage in this conflict that they started. And so there's concern that they may not even be able to locate that 10 month old when that baby was taken. He was nine months old and his brother's also being held inside Gaza. And that also really speaks to the fact there are so many families that were taken in at the same time being held hostage. And we know that of the children that were released and are currently here at the Ichilov Hospital in Tel Aviv, all of them have fathers that are still being held inside Gaza. Mm. And at this point in the negotiations, we're only talking about women and children. Well, Trey, the administration, Admiral, Admiral Kirby, was on our program on uh, the story with Martha McCallum. And he was asked about the Americans making contact with Hamas. And he's saying they're having to use channels that are outside of the American government. You've been able to make connections with Hamas. And I know it's a little bit different because you're a journalist. So how difficult is it to make that contact with Hamas? Because all the American people are wondering, where are the Americans being released? Yeah, it's a great question. And when we talk with Hamas officials, they've become increasingly frustrated throughout the war as I continue to question them over the phone and over text message about what they did on October 7th. They have gone as far to blatantly lie when presented with evidence because they simply don't want to tell the truth about what took place here. And so we're able to make contact and get comment from them about this ongoing conflict. But in terms of the information they're providing, we often will not actually bring to air what they are telling us because I can't confirm it. And a lot of times they're lying. Yeah. And so we do reach out. We try to do our due diligence on these stories and get as many perspectives and angles as possible. But when you're dealing with a terror organization, it's very challenging to get them to tell the truth and to provide accurate information. All right, Trey, uh, we'll check in with you again. And we'll try to find out what those plumes of smoke are about that you were splitting the screen with for a while.